This short presentation will review the chest x-ray appearance of lung nodules and lung masses. Incidentally found, lung nodules are not uncommon on chest radiography, and these get further evaluated by chest CT. On chest CT, we use the Fleischner Society guidelines to further guide follow-up and uh, possible biopsy of these nodules. The Fleischner Society guidelines do not apply to lung cancer screening patients. For that, we use the lung reds scoring criteria. It does not apply to patients who are younger than 35 because they are very unlikely to have lung cancer and the nodule is more likely to be um, an infectious process or granuloma. And uh, obviously the guidelines should not apply to uh, patients who have a primary cancer uh, or they are uh, immunosuppressed because uh, the lesion is more likely to represent metastatic disease. So although the Fleischner Society guidelines are used on chest CT and not chest radiography, I thought it would be important to review them here real quick. So single uh, pulmonary nodules less than six millimeter are very unlikely to be malignancy and in low risk patients, they require no further follow-up. On high risk patients such as smokers, uh, we typically suggest a 12 month follow-up exam. And then you can see how we handle the different sizes of pulmonary nodules above 6 millimeter, 6 to 8 millimeter, and above 8 millimeter. Above 8 millimeter is uh, a whole lot more suspicious for it to be malignancy, and uh, these patients either undergo a three month follow up, PET CT, or um, biopsy. Again, uh, these are the flesh to society criteria pertinent to chest CT. A solitary pulmonary nodule is defined as a rounded opacity which measures less than three centimeter in diameter, and it is not associated with lymphadenopathy, atelectasis, or pneumonia. About three centimeter, you would call it a pulmonary mass. This lesion that you see in the right upper lobe is approximately one and a half centimeter, so this would qualify for a well-defined pulmonary nodule that needs further in investigation with CT scan. On a chest x-ray, if you have a nodule that is less than 6 mm and it's very easy to see, that is typically because it is calcified and it's very likely to represent a calcified granuloma. Incidentally, this patient also has a rounded density posterior to the heart, which is a high etal hernia. As I mentioned earlier, the appropriate nomenclature is a pulmonary nodule if the lesion is less than 3 cm, and we call it a pulmonary mass if it is larger than 3 cm. And as you can see here in the statistics, small lesions are very unlikely to be malignant, and uh, as the size increases, the chance of malignancy increases as well. It is not only the size of the lesion that matters when you're considering benignity, but also the morphology and the location. Benign lesions such as granulomas and intrapulmonary lymph nodes tend to occur more peripherally, and um, pulmonary lymph nodes have a very typical appearance. They are oftentimes triangular in shape, and they are against the pleural surfaces. So you can easily dismiss this as an intrapulmonary lymph node. Most of the primary lung cancer affect the upper lobes, and the majority of the metastatic lesions shower the lower lobes of the lungs. So think about it, why could that be? And when you take a nice deep breath, your diaphragm is going to move down, your lungs uh, are going to expand more at the lung bases, you know, with the chest wall expanding. So you are going to have more airflow and more blood flow in the lung bases. In case of smoking, all the inhaled irritants are more likely to be stuck in the lung APCs where there is decreased airflow and decreased blood flow. And for this reason, it is more likely for them to develop lung cancer in the lung APCs. Some nodules present with internal calcifications. Typically, calcification is a sign of benignity. Um, there are calcifications, uh, there are fine and dendriform punctate, uh, which can be seen in malignant lesions. However, typically small calcified peripheral nodules are calcified granulomas. 
and larger lesions with popcorn calcifications are a typical feature of a hamartoma. These are images of two different patients, both showing a hamartoma. So this is a chest radiograph with a right upper lobe nodule, uh, which you can see that has a large coarse central calcification. And uh, this is a chest CT showing a left upper lobe nodule, again, also coarse central calcification, very typical appearance of a hamartoma. This is an AP chest radiograph of a young female demonstrating innumerable tiny, tiny, but very grossly obvious pulmonary nodules throughout the lungs. Now, these are much smaller than six millimeter and you can very easily see them. So they must be calcified. So this is a typical appearance of calcified granulomas throughout the lungs. This PHS radiograph demonstrates a very large left hilar mass with well-defined contours. So if we get lucky, then uh, lung cancer may present like this with uh, well margined contours and it is very easy to tell from pneumonia. That may not be the case with all lung masses as it may mimic a pneumonia initially. Therefore, when we describe pneumonia in a chest radiograph, uh, oftentimes you're going to see the radiologist saying follow up until resolution. And that is just to make sure that you treat it with antibiotics and you bring them back at least four weeks later and make sure that the lesion is going away just to prove that there is no underlying malignancy. When I was in medical school, the ER TV series was playing every Tuesday night and uh, we would watch it together, medical students. And um, I remember this one day when um, they threw a chest x-ray up on the light box and everyone looked at it, shook their head and they said, testicular cancer. Well, anyways, that's just the reason why I put it upside down here for you. Um, this image actually does demonstrate metastatic testicular cancer, which uh, sometimes presents with these multifocal uh, pulmonary nodules. So as you can see, these are like one to two centimeter in size, and they are you know, fairly visible um, at, at this size range already. But otherwise, metastatic disease can be very hard to pick up on chest radiograph and uh, they are typically being scanned for uh, with CT scan. One important concept I would like to hone down is the one view is no view. If uh, you are an ordering provider and your patient is able to go down for a two view chest radiograph, do not do a bedside x-ray, do the two view chest radiograph. So this image demonstrates a long mass that happens to live behind the right atrium and it's not visible on the AP view and it is clearly grossly obvious on the lateral view. So whenever it's possible, please do the two-view chest radiograph.